Welcome to the River Cup 2005. We've had a wonderful experience on Friday. On Saturday, we're all glad that you've congregated here together. We didn't know whether to have a council meeting or just an executive board meeting. At the executive board meeting, they asked me to relay some of the following information to you. The cost of today's party is $65 a head, but that's for good reason. Because last year's party went over budget. Sure, we could blame it on tax and spend liberal Democrats, but really, it was just a bunch of people that didn't pay their bills. But this year, we think that for your $65 a person, you're gonna get your wife off your back for playing golf twice, she is going to get a wonderful dinner and we're going to be around some of the nicest and prettiest people in the city of Richmond. Yeah, I think that we will find it very interesting, the history of the 2005 River Cup hats. The boys from Bone, this color is Bone, which is distinguishable from khaki. The Bone boys have got their hats. They have nothing on the inside and they just have the River Cup 2500 with the normal old crest. Now, the gentleman of the ZCV team, whose chief gentleman is and leader is Clifford Cully, we have, uh, birdies are not uncommon to this group. And as so, we try not to be too demonstrative whenever a, a good shot occurs. And so, Clifford, Cully, uh, Cully has shown us the way, and the way is whenever you hit, make a birdie, a hole in one or anything, you turn to your fellow playing partner out of the eyesight of your opponents and you just go a little. And the men from Khaki, the Khaki clan, we have inside our hats a little thumb guard because we have so many birdies we tend to wear the hat out right here. And you'll notice that the Willow Oaks boys don't have that special feature in their hat. Continuing on, we do have a situation that is, has become alarming over the last few years. And, and uh, Captain Moss has taken it very seriously the last few, I don't think it's been a decade of defeat, but just, just short of a decade of defeat for the Willow Oaks team. Even the country club fellows feel a little sorry for them because we've lost before ourselves. And Langdon Moss, captain, has taken, taken extraordinary uh, measures to uh, get his team to regroup and build a little more camaraderie. And along those exact same lines, I'd like to bring up the party again tonight and the exorbitant price. Sure, it's an exorbitant, I'm probably Cabell Moore wasn't gonna spend $60, $65 on a date. He ought to be, he's probably here solo tonight. But on the other hand, even if we don't get the deadbeats to pay up, we have a different, an alternative way of uh, raising revenue. And I hope that you will find our product placements and our uh, little signage uh, appropriate for the upcoming part of the video. Thank you very much. That one's a little left, about two yards left on that one. That's better. Okay, good. All right, all right. Let's everybody come over here to the bench and let's uh, have a final, final couple of words here before we start. All right, guys. Appreciate you being out here today. You know, it's been a 
couple of tough years for our squad in the River Cup. We've lost uh, two years ago pretty badly. And uh, as much as I tried to rally the troops last year, we lost even worse. Uh, been some grumblings about me as captain. I feel like I've provided pretty, pretty good leadership to you guys. We won four years in a row, probably the highlight of my athletic career. And uh, you know, we really need to do something this year. I think this is a pivotal year. You know, back in uh, July when we started these practice sessions and everybody was coming out, uh, I knew we'd probably lose a few to attrition, but I just want to appreciate all you guys that have stuck with it, come out here and given everything you have, and I think it's going to pay off today as we take, start our quest to bring the cup back to Willow Oaks. So I just want to tell you, just let's focus out there, let's keep our mind on the mission, and let's bring that cup home. Are there any questions before we start? Jim, do you have any questions? No, no, sir. Okay, all right, let's get right here. Team on three, ready? One, two, three, team! This is a special segment of the uh, entertainment tonight, and I'd like to bring up the fact that we're paying $65 for this meal, and I think it's a bargain at any price. I can't think of a nicer group that I could ever be with. Unless, of course, you count the canisters. See, I had about, Marion and I had a party last night for the members of the uh, country club team. We celebrated, probably had about uh, 2,000. We have a bunch of rocks here that we're putting away, a bunch of propane. We use this just to cook hamburgers, to show you how many people we had. And to, to that end, I hope that we have a good time tonight at $65 a person because it's a good value and the meal's great and it'll be fun. Now on the other hand, this is a most important part of this video because we're going to introduce a segment that is tiresome. You've probably seen it way too many times, but we're going to show it to you one more time. The River Cup video flashback. This particular video flashback is going to be for how to dress during those cold weather golf days that are so important when you want to keep your score under par and you have to stay limber and warm at the same time. Here's some hints that I think you may find uh, helpful for maybe tomorrow or some other time in the future. Honey, it's time to get up. Go pay and play in the river cup. <sighs> okay, I'll be right up, honey. <clears throat> Mm, hey, what's the weather out, honey? Honey, it's cold and rainy with a wind chill of 40 degrees. Oh, right. That's perfect. Anticipating inclement weather at Will Oaks, it is proper to be fully prepared at all times. I think that uh, the first article of clothing that needs to be put on for any good golfer in the River Cup will be the ball warmer. It may be preferable, if you have one, to get a wool line ball warmer, and in some cases one with an extra large pouch. The traditional cotton uh, t-shirt is going to be the most important article that you put on because in case the weather warms up, it will absorb all the potential perspiration that can come while you're making those all-important 90-foot uh, putts. Next, we need to get the all-important turtleneck to make sure that the neck, which obviously will houses the throat, stays moist at all times. And it does make sure that it happens for the country club uh, members. I think it's important to put on another cotton uh, turtleneck. This one's made by um, Jacques Finet, and I think that's all we can afford at the time. You'll notice that it uh, fits snugly to the uh, participant's body. Next, we go to the traditional Country Club of Virginia White Sox. Uh, the White Sox are in memory of the about three quarters of the River Cup participants have, uh, from the Country Club side, have been recent uh, members, and they uh, sold 10 acres of land off of Broad Street. They're basically dirt farmers. But since we're going to Will Oaks today, I think it's important that we cover them up with the traditional dress of dark black socks so they can't see our white socks. Knowing that uh, luck plays a big role in River Cup competitions. It's always good to put on your good luck shirt, something that you really know is part of a winning organization. And a long sleeve good luck charm will really do the trick. Uh, after that, 
you have to make sure that your trunk is at, uh, warm at all times. And we recommend $39 to J.C. Penney's, one of these little sweater vests, sleeveless, because you have enough uh, turtlenecks on already. Very well done. Then another good luck charm, because you always want to think of something that's a winning organization. So you want to put on all the good luck charms, things that you know are out and out winners. The same function performed by the white undershirt is a nice light pair of slacks. To, to just to keep the, uh, to work, act as a windshield by and large. Now that we've got the inner light layer, it's good to put in a warm outer layer, just in case it starts hailing. taken care of one more outer layer to protect that chilling wind that comes off the icy James River down at the bottom of Willows. Finally, the knit cap. The all-important knit cap is not a golf hat today because we have to cover those ears and your forehead. And then the all-important in-between shots, thermal gloves tested to 17 below zero. They can actually be used in golf gloves as golf gloves for some of the golfers. And now the River Cup participant is ready to go. Unless, of course, he belongs to that group that went 0 and 9. And there, there we have a special cap that they might want to darn for tomorrow's festivities. The perfect golfer. And now you're ready for River Cup competition. Good luck, honey. Thanks, dear. But just in case that the uh, weather is a little worse than you anticipate, it's always good to have one more cover, preferably a sub-32 degree thermal outerwear garment, just for extra protection. Well, once you're perfectly attired, the final step is to make sure that your clothing renders you the maximum amount of flexibility to swing that all-important club. A few practice swings will make sure that you're not overly constricted in your swing. Oh man, I think that's I think that's a ticket. You gotta have friends. Oh. Oh. <laughs> thank you so much, sir. All right. Well, thank you, guys. George, George, you did good work. We are introducing a segment that you have seen many, many times, but never in this form. A new tradition is being started tonight. Don't go to the bathroom now. Don't go get a drink. This will be worth watching. River Cup Captain Langdon Moss has instituted a new situation, a new ceremony, a new induction ceremony that I think you will find riveting, captivating, and in some respects decapitating. Watch now with me and enjoy. One of the highlights of every year's River Cup is induction into the River Cup Hall of Fame. Unfortunately, the River Cup Hall of Fame is full. Uh, it's been said many times that people at country clubs would be a lot nicer to each other if, in order to bring in a new member, you kicked a member out. We decided to grasp that as part of what we do for the River Cup Hall of Fame from this point forward. So we'd like to honor uh, an inductee this year from Willow Oaks Country Club, but in order to do that, we have to eliminate one of our current members. Uh, the committee looked long and hard at this. It was a tough decision, but in the end, we decided that whining and crying have no place in golf. So, Brad Smallwood, we're real sorry, but you've just been evicted from the River Cup Hall of Fame. And I'm pleased to announce that because of his diligent work ethic and showing up every morning uh, from July until today for the early morning workouts at 5.30 in the morning, I might add, uh, this year's inductee to the River Cup Hall of Fame from Willow Oaks Country Club is Mr. Jim Dwyer. Jim? Congratulations. Thank you very much, Langdon. 
It's a great honor to be in the River Cup Hall of Fame. I appreciate all the effort you've uh, put into it. I can't imagine what you're thinking right now. Well, I'm, I'm just so happy. I know you've been looking and thinking about it for a while, and I'm so happy you found a suitable person to kick out before so I could find a place. Well, as I will admonish every River Cup Hall of Famer from this point forward, keep that in mind because this could be a very short uh, tenure for you in the River Cup if things don't work out next year. I'll do the best I can. To uh, present Jim with his, uh, his uh, River Cup paraphernalia and mementos is uh, Willow Oaks assistant golf pro, Mr. Ryan Ibarra. Ryan? Mr. Dwyer, this is your Titleist Bucky oversized wedge and your bucket hat. Well, thank you so much. Congratulations. I do, I do appreciate it, but I'm a little, I'm a little bit disturbed by this one. And, and why is that, Jim? Well, I, looking at this golf club, this looks an awful lot like one of those natural golf clubs that Brad was using. Oh, no, 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 no. We, we don't do natural golf in the River Cup. Oh, so this is, this is unnatural? That's unnatural. Thank well, you. Ryan, thank you very much. Jim, yes, again, congratulations. Oh, Langdon, that was great. Another tradition born in Richmond. Nothing that Richmond needs more than one more tradition. We have a terrible time of trying to figure out who to excommunicate from the CCV side of the ledger from the River Cup Hall of Fame, but I have here with me the inductees. And we had a problem, and the problem was there were so many people that qualified, no, we could not have a consensus built to just pick on one. John Leach, for a variety of reasons, would have qualified, but. We didn't want to see a grown man cry at a wonderful party. On the other hand, we had uh, George Mormon qualified to be kicked out of the Hall of Fame, even though his, his ear routine was just one of the best ever. George seemed to think that the Miami-Virginia Tech game was a little more important being with his wonderful friends here and their lovely wives at this party. On the other hand, we couldn't find anybody to go into the darn thing either. Obviously by our play on Friday, nobody really deserved to go in and I think that we have made the right decision in 2005 for the CCV River Cup uh, inductions. Given that we've run out of ideas for induction or deduction, what we've decided to do is to come up with our own award that is appropriate specifically for this year. You know, uh, when a crime's committed, usually people scatter and nobody talks about it. But I'm here to reveal the truth of what happened on Friday afternoon in a very tightly contested match after excellent golfer Paul Strauss had gotten the word and the last minute pep talk from his captain Langdon Moss, he went out there and injured one of our players. He took his club and he smacked our player right in the chest. And you know what? It wasn't a pretty sight. And he had to be a good shot to hit his chest. But when Cabell Moore went down, there went our hopes at nine points right there. And nine points one way and nine points another way is a difference of 18 points. And this could have been a tie ball game. John Chaney did the exact same thing that uh, Captain Moss did. He learned it from the Temple Owl coach who last year was getting blown out, put in his football player, Goon, i.e. Paul Strauss, threw him into the game and knocked their best score on the ground to have a broken wrist and he's out for the whole season. I hope that doesn't happen to poor Cabell Moore. So, in honor of their exploits, we have decided to make the first annual John Cheney Mug Him If You Got Him award to, that goes out to Captain Langdon Moss and participant Paul Strauss on their vicious attack on helpless, defenseless, skinny Cabell Moore. Alas, poor Cabell. And I hope you had a good time for it. The 2005, um, what are we calling this thing? We call it a uh, video. And we hope that everybody comes back for the 2006. And if you don't sign up now, you might lose your spot to a better player. <laughs>